All right, guys, welcome to a new episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. I have a very interesting guest. He is a CrossFit owner, coach, nutrition coach, father, and also the creator of the creator of the Masters Fitness Collective, Jamie Free. How are you doing? Uh, appreciate you having me on, Tom. So um, I was doing some research on you. I was digging deep on the Instagram <laughs> and like YouTube and stuff. So we have a little bit, something in common. Um you're from Rhode Island. Yes. I am originally from Massachusetts. Okay. And so I saw the sweatshirt. I'm like, oh snap, he's a Patriots fan. Absolutely. And I'm like, I'm like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and so I got excited about that. I, I saw like I think he was with your daughter, and like there was like the, the Patriots logo was on the sweatshirt. And I'm like, oh yes, he's a Patriots fan. Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I born I was born in 82. So like, you know, um, into a lot of losing you know so the red sox bruins patriots mm -hmm. the only ones that were really good at that time were the celtics um but you know i mean it's yeah it's a way of life in my household even though my wife is a part-time dolphins fan <laughs> so you know yeah 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 we're, we're all huge huge patriot fans in my family nice so i got my son in, so i was born in 79 so i was in that group as well mm -hmm. so and actually my high school football coach was Roland James. He played in the 83 Super Bowl. And then then also my um, my college football coach was Steve Nelson, which he was also in the 83 Super Bowl. Okay. So it's kind of okay. like and I, and I used to live. So I lived in Sharon, Mass, which is like right next door to Foxborough. OK, so it was like, you know, all, all the all the pros just were like living around there and started coaching, coaching. the kids. I, in, I, I lived in Cumberland. Rhode Island, okay. so it's like right right next to North Attleboro, which yep, you know, we've all heard all about North Attleboro now. Um, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah, um, yeah, no, that's cool. Small world. Yeah, and um, so what what made you move down to Nashville? Now I've I've kind of been all over the place. Um, I I'm originally from Rhode Island. I've lived in Connecticut. I've lived in Tennessee. Um, then I moved back to Connecticut to play hockey in prep school. Mm -hmm. um, went to college in New York, played football. And, uh, then I moved to California. I worked in professional sports for about five years. Cool. Um, fell in love with nutrition. Um, I ended up moving back to Nashville in 2008 to open my own nutrition store. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, then supplements kind of just like didn't do it for me. And, and, but the food did. So you know, I'm going on year like, I think it's year 17 of, of being a nutritionist. And it's, man, I love what I do. I'm so blessed. It, it really is wonderful. Yeah. And I heard in a podcast that you've actually like been a nutritionist for like professional athletes, mm -hmm. obviously like the a lot of CrossFit athletes too, as yeah. well. And, mm -hmm. and like just the gen pop, you know, gen, general, yeah. general population community. So what, what do all three have in common when it comes to nutrition for like learning new things and whatnot? You know, I, I try not to think that there's one way to approach any of this because, you know, like, like I've worked with type one diabetics, I've worked with type two diabetics, but I've, you know, working with everyone is so different and everyone yeah. is so unique. So it's like trying to be like, like I don't work off templates. So it's more like, you know, I've, have our intake and I, we do our consult and then I build everything out based on the, the conversation that we have there. Um, you know, so it's, they're, they're not alike, I guess it would be my answer. Um, you know, the majority, even I have two, two twin sisters that are, that are pretty good athletes that, um, that eat differently, you know, they're, and they're the same genetics. So like, I can't treat, can't treat everyone the same for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How So how many clients do you typically have at like one time? You know, I mean, I try to limit it these days because uh, I, I took a, a actual corporate position. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm director of corporate wellness for a company out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. And okay. uh, but I take on it probably anywhere between five and eight a month. Um you know, and I have my reoccurring athletes that I still work with. I worked with a bunch of guys in the NFL and love uh, it's cool to see that. But, you know, the majority of people that I work with that, that actually pay the bills are, you know, just normal people like you and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, 
do you have do you typically like, like if someone says hey i want to go vegan or i want to try like a different diet do you like kind of like macgyver it to what their needs are or whatnot especially going vegan yeah you know i mean it's i usually want to know why um, just so I can understand where they're coming from. So, you know, it's not like, Hey, I thought I was going to lose more weight this way or anything like that. It's, if it's like a, a moral and ethical reason and, or they're like, you know what? I just don't like the taste of meat. Cool. I can, fi- I can, I can show you how to do that. Mm. But if you're doing it just cause it's the cool thing to do, I, I, <laughs> I probably won't be a part of that transition, um, Yeah, you know, and, and, and I'm comfortable saying no to people. Um, but I'm also comfortable educating them on, on what they, you know, what they want to do, what it looks like, and then being like, Hey, th- is this realistic for you? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my wife and my kids are going vegan. Well, mm-hmm. actually my, my youngest, my youngest is like kind of in and out here and there. Cause she's, she's five. So she's like mm-hmm. super picky, but my eight year old son is like, like they want to just to go vegan, which I'm, I'm all for like, let them do it. They've been like, yes they have, they have a nutrition, nutrition coach and all that stuff. So they kind of like lead that path. I have no interest. Like I'll, I'll eat it for dinner, but like, I, I need to have like steak or chicken or fish or something like that. Cause I just can't, I don't know. I, I just can't do tofu. It's just like, it, it's so gross for me. And, and even like beyond burgers, like I, I, the, some of them are not that bad. Like I've tried them and they're pretty good, but like, it's just, I just freak out about the chemicals and stuff like that. That's like the one thing I'm, I'm worried about. Well, you know, and I, I, there's, there's so many things that go into it and people are like, oh, it's, you know, I don't like processed foods, but that's like the most highly processed food that you can find. Mm -hmm. Um, And the the issues I have with that are are usually more or less like, all right, they don't like, they they think it's animal cruelty to, to eat meat, but what you're doing to the ground is killing so much of of part of the the whole sphere of of life the cycle of life that you know i mean it's it's like six to one half dozen the other so you know it, you're it's a it's a lose lose if you're really looking at it um mm-hmm. but you know i mean i'm i'm also not going to be like well that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard so you know, <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i'm going to help people who want help but if they if they're just doing it to be trendy then i'm, I'm probably not going to do it yeah, it's it's almost like a plastic surgeon when they have a when a patient comes in saying, "I want to look like Brad Pitt," and they're like, "Uh, you might want to go someplace else." I can't I can't fix that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I'm um, also I I like to talk to uh, fathers like like I like to talk about like being a dad like right in the beginning of the podcast. But um, yeah. so you you have two two daughters, is it? I have I have a, a one one two and a half year old daughter and one ten month old son. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. So, cause I saw the picture of them in the snow and I was like, okay, is, is that a, well, like, you know, I couldn't uh, really tell. So, you know, they, they are almost identical. They're actually, so my wife and I had to go through IVF. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, we, it was painstaking process and it's one of those things where, you know, they came from the same embryo group. So they're technically embryo twins. So they look almost identical. Um, but you know, yeah, it's, he's, he's starting to, he's thicker than she is. He, yeah. she's got, he's like 25 pounds and she's 30 pounds. Jeez. That's crazy. He's just, he's thick. He's hopefully he's going to be taller than, than my side of the family, but you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when, when, you, um, when your wife got pregnant for the first time, like what was going through your mind of like, you know, <clears throat> this, like, was it a complete like shock at all? That was not, not, not meaning a shock. Was it like, you're like, your whole mindset changed about like, okay, I need to think this way now compared to what it was before. You know, I mean, being an older father, uh, first time father, you know, I think, you know, emotionally you're a little more prepared. Um, I didn't know what the heck I was going to do with a girl. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. like, I'm like, I'm a boy. I, I know what to do with a boy. And I'll tell you when I had a boy, I did not know what to do with him. So it's like, I, I didn't know anything. Uh, my wife is, is probably like, she will literally study topics. She's read the CrossFit rule book every year. Yep. She's, she's that person that is like, she's so intelligent, so book smart. I don't know how she picked me, but like it, <laughs> it, she has all the answers and I'm just like, I'm just going to look to you. You tell me 
what I'm supposed to do because like it's clearly sometimes not working, but mm -hmm. you know, she's uh she she's kind of leads me in that department. Okay. So how much is does your daughter influence you? Because obviously like mine, like I'm wrapped around her finger. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, if she says something or like she wants to do something, I'm like, no. And then she like gets the, like the pouty face and I'm like, crap. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Go ahead. Is, is that the same with you? Pretty standard. Yeah. It's uh, she'll look at me and go, please. Oh, geez. Like, Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, um, with your with your son and daughter so mm -hmm. um you know are you tr are you trying to sh especially with your daughter are you trying to show her what it should be like to be a great dad and also you know i granted she's still younger but like later mm -hmm. on in life to be in like a great husband and or a great you know supporter for her well i, I think one of the things my wife said to me that really kind of hit home is that this i'm gonna be what she wants to look for in, in a man at some point, mm -hmm. you know, so how I treat my wife, how I go about my day, how I make time for them is, is so important that, you know, I, I think that, um, it, it made me be a lot more intentional with my time, you know? So like, I, I don't work out for three hours a day. I work out for an hour. It's usually at three 30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I'm, I'm there when they wake up, you know, I, I, the hard thing for me right now is I travel for work. So um, I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana right now. And um, being away from them is just awful. Like it makes uh, like I feel like I'm missing everything. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and especially with the younger one, like you like he's really young. So he's like doing things that you probably he's doing a lot of firsts. Yeah. And so you're you're almost like at the point of missing out. You're like, shit, this is this sucks. My wife just sent me a video of him walking. I'm like, <sighs> Oh, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's what almost happened to, um, my wife. So with my son, my father-in-law and I were, were there together, like in the same room, like just messing around with my son. And all of a sudden he just like got up and took like one step and we're like looking at each other. Like, did he just, did he, did he just walk? And so then we pushed him back a little bit and then he was like taking more and more steps. And then like when my wife came home, we're like, Hey, look at this. It's so she saw him walk. She's like, wait, I missed it. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it wasn't our fault. I mean, he just decided he just wanted to do it. You got to shove him over. I mean, just, just <laughs> a little push. He never happened. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So. Well, she saw, she, she saw our, our daughter walk for the first time. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of, oh, we're kind of even a little now. bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so with the, with your busy schedule, like how, like, especially you being home. I know you say you work out really early. Like my, mm -hmm. I do it too. I work, I work out at like four 30 in the morning mm -hmm. and like, so how do you schedule your time or block your time that you actually have enough time for, you know, your wife and your kids? So, um, my wife is, is stays at home. Um, and, and our goal is to homeschool our kids. So, you know, that's, that's going to be something that's in, really important to us. Um, but I, I basically live, every day by a schedule, like everything is structured. Um, you know, so, so from three 30 to five, I'm working out then from five to six 30, I'm, I'm usually working and then I'll, I'll make breakfast for my daughter, wake her up, get her set up. You know, we're doing potty training right now. So it's, it's interesting. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I always want to bring her to school. So I bring her to, to, a. a her school. And, and that's like her and I's time, you know, and then <clears throat> I get home, I go home for lunch. I'll, I'll have lunch with my wife. I, I mean, I, I just, anytime that, and I've worked very hard to be within five miles of my house at all times. Mm -hmm. So I can always be home. I can, I can always make time. Um, and, and I think that's, that's been highly beneficial for, for my, my mental health is, is to be around my wife and my kids as much as possible. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I, I drive both of my kids to school. And then the one thing with my daughter, I do when I drop her off at like pre-K, I'll get her out of the car and I throw her up in the air and then I catch her and she mm -hmm. like, she is all, it's like literally for the past two years, we've been doing that. And she's mm -hmm. like, every time with like, we do like a donuts for dad kind of deal. She's like, I love it when I love it when dad throws me up in the air before yeah. I go to school. So 
And I'm like, it's, it's cool. Just like, even like having her say that, or like snuggling with you or even like my son, like snuggling with them. And they say like, I love you. It's just like, it's so awesome when you hear that. The first time my, my daughter said, I love you, dad. I was like floored, like tears. I walked into the, to the other room and I was just like crying. Like it, 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 they, it, I don't know what happens when you have kids, but it just, all the emotions come out. Mm -hmm. They, they just soften you up pretty much. Yeah. I'm, I mean, most people who know me wouldn't say that I'm soft, but like at home, I am very, very <laughs> soft, snuggle soft. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like, it's just cool. Just like having like you're laying on the couch and all of a sudden your kids just like lay right, right on top of you. And it's just like, yeah. okay, like that they feel safe and I feel, I, I feel at peace and it feels comfortable. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good, good thing to have kids. Absolutely. Are you, are you looking to have any more at all or, or, or just like you're two and done? Uh, I mean, I'm good with, I'm good with two. Um, we would have to go through the process again, which I'm, you know, I, we, we got so lucky, you know, the IVF is not a guarantee. It's, it's, no. you know, when we got two out of it and it, I just, I, I feel like I'm tempting fate and, and the failure of it is, is honestly scarier to me like say it doesn't work you know what happens then like i don't i don't have i don't have to worry about that right now because it worked twice mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean it, in my mind i'm done um but you know my wife is constantly trying to talk me into more so <laughs> and i'm like and i'm 41 do i really need more kids i don't think so now I, I told my wife, like once, once I hit 40, like, like no more. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm 44 and I'm like, I can't, I can't imagine having kids like over 40. Like it's just, I just, I don't think I could do it. It's uh, you start to think about like, all right, when he turns 21, I'm going to be 63. Awesome. Yeah. Like that's just, it, it feels old now, obviously like we take care of ourselves and, you know, um, we try to live as, as clean as possible and as healthy as possible, but at 65 is still 63 is still 63. I mean, it's just not everyone. Like I, I was on a MFC podcast earlier today with Ron Ortiz. Mm -hmm. He's 60. That dude doesn't look like 60. Like no, not at there's all. Not many people like Ron out there, you know? So it's like, what am I going to look like? I'm, I'm short and stubby. I mean, it's not going to be pretty. So, you know, I don't know. Well, I mean, you threw up some crazy numbers, by the way. So I was hearing, um, oh, it, it was, um, his, I think his last name was Flynn. You've been on his podcast like a couple times. Okay, yeah. I, I, I forget, like you guys were like literally sitting in the same room. Yeah, and, Ken Lapp. Yeah, that, that's it. That Ken Lapp, that's right. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you were telling, like, you're telling him your numbers, like 275 snatch. And, and I'm like, that's damn, awesome. that's crazy. That's all time. It, 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 it's, it's not recent because I, I've had elbow surgery since then. And it's just, mm. you know, my, my arm's not feeling the, the same as it was, but you know, I was, I used to be able to snatch 275 and clean and jerk 340. And, but my pure strength numbers are, are like, you know, I wish I trained like this in college when I played football because I I'm so much stronger now than I was. I'm more explosive than I was then. Oh yeah. You know? Yep. You know, so, I mean, it's like, man, I, could I still, can I still go hit someone? Maybe. I don't know. That would be fun. Yeah. Like all, all of my numbers, like and I'm 44, like are just like going like through the roof that like I've never lifted. Cause awesome. so my, my clean and jerks 320 and mm -hmm. then my snatch is 250. And so, and also I'm, I'm six, six, so it doesn't really help me out with all that stuff. No, not, not even a little bit. Yeah. And so like, it was crazy. Cause like, if you told me back when I first started CrossFit at like 27, I'd like, Hey, you're going to be able to lift this amount at this, this age. I'm like, there is no way I'm going to be able to do that. No way. And nah, then I, I it's it. crazy. Just follow the program, follow a program and like stick, with, follow a good program and yeah. stick with it. And then you'll get those, get those gains. Well, I mean, and here's the thing at this point, You've been doing it for so long. I've been doing it for so long. It's about making sure that you're smart with the training more so than just getting volume in. Um, 
I used to follow a, a different program and it was just so much volume. Like I'm like, I was injured all the time, but you know, when you're like, so I switched that off that and now it's just, I I'm training smarter mm -hmm. for longevity. You know, I mean, I don't know if I'm ever going to have to pick something up off the ground. That's over 600 pounds, but you know, I mean, I do it occasionally. Yeah. So it's, it's just one of those things where you kind of like, you know, there's a few things I'll check in on and be like, all right, I got it. And then there's a few things I'm just like, nah, I don't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's interesting. Cause like, it's always at the point where like, I'm, I'm still like, I still think I'm like in my twenties and I'm like, yeah. all right, like I want to hit three thirty for a clean and jerk. And like, I want to hit like two sixty, and I'm like, is is this really worth it like what's the what's the end goal for this like mm -hmm. is there is there ever going to be you know is there a stop is there ever a stopping point yeah so no. that's that's my main concern <laughs> yeah that's my main concern i'm like i, I don't know yeah. like if i like if i do one pound or like if i just stick with that weight and just like kind of maintain that would that be worth it at all or i i don't know you know i mean i think you can be happy with numbers but never satisfied you know, mm -hmm. I mean, so like I have to force myself to get excited about like something I've done because yeah. I'm like What's the next thing, let's just go to the next thing. Let's go to the next thing. You know? So it's like, you should, first of all, I mean, you should be really, that's awesome that you're snatching 250 at six, six, like that's insane. Just so you know, like, that's wild. It. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and 320 squat, uh, like clean and jerk is, is nuts too. So it's like, you know, you should be happy with that, but should you stop? No, probably not. No, it's just like not in you to stop. No, no, like I'm my own worst coach too. Like I, mm -hmm. I want to like if I hit a number, I, I'll, I'll keep on going for it. And then like, like because the 250 snatch, it took me, gosh, it had to be like six tries. Yeah. To to get it, and then like even before that I was getting like 240 and 245 and I was like missing a couple of times too. So it's, it was just like, I, I was just sitting there like the whole time, like forget the rest of the day. Like I just wanted to hit this and like, yeah. and like I, I had nothing else. Like I wanted to do other parts of like my workout, but I was just like, Nope, goal is to hit this and let's just do it. Yeah. No, I'm, I, I've been stubborn like that. Very many times, honestly, so stubborn that I've, so I, I have a, a, decent garage gym and um there's a fridge in there and this is when before kids um a little tightly wound um and i missed this i missed like i don't know it was like 255 250 to i it was it was a decent number snatch and i missed it like seven times and i punched the fridge and broke my hand <laughs> so so I wasn't snatching anymore after that for a little while. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I typically just throw the weight belt down and just like slam it. And I'm like, okay, because I'm like, I've I've learned my lesson, especially being in mm. the medical medical field, like people punching glass windows or whatever and like breaking getting like boxer fractures. And I'm like, yeah, that's I that's not that's not for me. No, and, and honestly, I can tell you it's not for me either. Yeah, you know, it's, I'm not like a, a tough individual and I don't like to fight. I don't like to do any of that stuff, but it was just so much like frustration that I wasn't hitting it. And then I, the only thing I did hit was the refrigerator. Yeah. So yeah, it was unfortunate. But, but before all that, so your, your story of how you got involved with cross, how you started cross was, is, I mean, I was laughing at it because the first workout you did was was crazy so can you kind of talk to the listeners about the story of how you actually got started in crossfit yeah i mean the first workout i mean i i, I don't know man it was i don't know why i was even thinking that i could do it um <laughs> i was i was uh owning i owned my nutrition store and i was over like spot like working with one of my sponsored athletes and i was like just cheering them on and it was 2012 open the first workout and it was like seven minutes of burpees and i was like i could do burpees burpees are easy i can do this crossfit thing <laughs> yeah so i i apparently came i don't really remember a lot um but it i came out really hot and i think i was like 25 or 27 burpees in the first minute oh my and god yeah it was it was a really bad situation from there on. Um, I, I ended with 83, which not that many when you come to come out with 27, but, 
Um, I laid on the ground for like an hour and a half afterwards and just couldn't move. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I promised myself, I was like, I told uh, the guy who got me started, his name's Derek Robinson. Um, he's, he's like an OG in, in Tennessee. Um, but like, I was like, I'll give you a year. I was like, you get me to regionals. I never want something to make me feel that way again. <laughs> and, um, every CrossFit workout has made me feel that way since then. Um, but uh, he got me to regionals in 2013, and it was um, it was quite an experience. Yeah. So what what was it like for your first time being at regionals? Oh man, I, I adrenaline dumped hard. <laughs> I got so we didn't have a rower at the gym I was at because I had just switched gyms. Mm. Uh, I'd never done Jackie before, and uh, I smashed the 1K. Just I was like first off the rower. And, and then I got to the barbell, which is 45 pounds. I'm like, no big deal. Um, I got to 19 and my body was just like, nope, you're done. Just shut down. And I finished second to last. First <laughs> up, first, second to last. <laughs> yeah. That's usually the case. Like always first off the rower, you're not going to see that person win unless they're like some like freak, freak of nature. And it's not me. I'm not that guy. So. <laughs> But I was like yeah. 230 pounds back then. So I was a, I was quite a bit bigger than I, I am now. Um, I, I've kind of found that sweet spot, um, 5'11", 210 pounds. So. Yeah, I just weighed myself. I'm 228 and I'm like, holy shit, that's not good. I'm like, because usually yeah. I, I usually go from like two, 215 to like 220. Like that's yeah. like kind of a sweet spot for me, especially for like. I'm, I'm not the best at gymnastics. Like everyone every, being six, six, everyone can figure that out. So it's, you know, yeah. it's not that hard, but like, at least if I stay at that weight, I feel more comfortable, like be able to like move around and stuff. But like when I weighed myself, I was like, Oh man, that's not good. Like, especially like doing all this move, all quick movement, especially for the, this first open workout too. I, I was going to say uh, you're six, six. How do you feel about all this hinging? I, well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm able to get low on the burpees. Like that's not a problem. Yeah. It's, it's just like the, the demo snatches. Like there's so there's like nine, 90 of them pretty much. And so it's just like on one arm. I mean, I could probably go like up, like touch and go the whole time. That's not going to be an issue, but it's just like, I don't know, putting the, those together. It's going to be nasty. So, I mean, I, you're just going to be hinging the whole time. It's just all lower back, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not super excited about it. I, I think anyone over 200 pounds is not super excited about it, but you know, it, it is what it is. It's, it's the first week of the open. Yeah. And it, it was funny. Like everyone was saying like, what's wrong with Fukowski? Like, why is he like so far behind? I'm like, cause the dude's like five eleven or five, like he's almost like six feet. Like, of course he's going to be slower than like all these guys. I think Brett's like six, two. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You're six two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so like he's, uh, that the cycle time, you, 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 there's only so fast you can go, you know I mean? And a guy, you got a guy like Jeff Adler next to you, who's probably five, eight, five, nine. And, you know, I mean, it doesn't take anything away from him. He's very fit, but you know, you, you can't, you can't argue with physics. I mean, it's, that's, that's science. <laughs> you're yeah. shorter. It's shorter yeah. cycle time. I, I was like, when I was at the gym, uh, my, my old, where I used to live before, um, there was a kid, he was 18 and like, I've always wanted to like, kind of be like, you know, neck and neck with him. And so yeah. one day I was videotaping it, like my workout and he was right next to me. And so I stopped, I was like, Hey, what rep are you on? And so he's like, I'm on rep, like, I don't know, like 20 at the time. And I'm like, how is that possible? Like I'm on like 10 or 11, like, and then I looked at it. I'm like his cycle time. It was so much quicker because yeah. he was like half my height. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's why I can't really gain this. I can't really catch up to him if he's like doing that so quick no but you put you in a on a row wall ball workout that's that's a different oh, game. i killed him yeah i killed yeah. him <clears throat> yeah exactly but uh so so um you also do you still own crossfit um trillium is it trivium or yeah. trivium i'm sorry i'm, I'm a co-owner um uh, my co-owner is uh nate dodd he's uh, uh been crossfitting a long time crossfit changed his life he was like 310 pounds and damn now he's like built like a brick shit house. So, yeah. So what, what made you go yeah. into buying a box or actually starting a box? You know, I, I had been accumulated. I've been a part of boxes. I've been coaching and I've managed a couple. And then, you know, I was like 
starting to accumulate equipment over a period of time to like open my own. Cause I was like this, you know, this is, I can't see myself training another way. Um, like I want to make this something that is mine. Um, and it just, the opportunity never presented itself to do my own thing. Um, I started coaching at what was then Brentwood Hills. Um, and the opportunity arose uh, we moved to a new space and, you know, they wanted a, someone to come on that had a lot of experience. And, you know, I utilized that equipment as my buy-in and, <laughs> you know, here I am. Yeah. So were there like any like pain points at the time when you first opened it to get <clears throat> clients in or like what, like, how did you get the clients in to actually pay for your rent? Well, I mean, it's, um, it was, it was, it was tough initially. Like we did, we, had like kind of like a sublease with someone and that was a really bad relationship. Um, and once we kicked them out, then COVID hit. So it was like, all right, <laughs> now we're shut down. And luckily we were only shut down for five weeks. Um, Williamson County is just a little bit more conservative. Um, yep. so we, we lucked out on that side of things. Um, uh, but like coming out, going into COVID, uh, Nate and I had a really good plan. Uh, we cut, started whittling down class sizes. We made the boxes. We did all that stuff. And then going out of it, we did the same thing, slowly building it back up to our, you know, 15, 16, 17 person classes. But um, we were just really meticulous about it. And I think, you know, the way we handled things, uh, we went from like 80 members to I think we're over 200 now. So, wow. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's he's a great partner to have. Um, he's kind of a tech nerd. Um, so he like, he does a lot of the SEO stuff. He does. I mean, I just, I, I interact. Uh, I don't do a lot of technology stuff. So, yeah, yeah. um, it's, it's a really good partnership and, and I've enjoyed it. Yeah. And you've had some like CrossFit athletes like Brooke Wells, Will Morad, mm -hmm. Alex Smith, um, even Bro uh, Brooks, uh, Sydney Wells as well, as yep. well. And, uh, so how did, how did they all of a sudden like come to your gym and like what made them kind of stick for a little while before they, you know, moved on? Well, you know, and Brooke, Brooke and uh, Will are still at the gym. Um, you know, so they're, I was Will's nutrition coach for probably like eight years. Um, he's just, he's a smart guy. He knows what to do now. He doesn't really need assistance there. He's very analytical. So, um, he's, he's done really well for himself. So I mean, like, I'm not going to argue with him and be like, Oh, you look fat. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, so I still, I work with Brooke. Um, they're still there. We had like street Horner was there. Alex Smith, um, Sid, um, Sydney Michalition was there for a little bit. Um, all the proven people were there before proven, you know, had their headquarters, uh, in Nashville. So, um, you know, I, I think how we handled Brooke during the 2020 games was was awesome. Like it, it we we put on a show for her, um, and that kind of like you know built a relationship that you know she, I don't think she's unless she moves. I don't think she's going anywhere. Um, you know, she she feels at home at Trivium, and and we're lucky to have her. Yeah, and so how do you block out the time from? like them training compared to like your other, other clients that like just are there just to get that hour workout in. So how, how do you manage like those, those schedules? Um, we, we prioritize classes. So our members and our classes always have a priority. Um, when I'm coaching, I coach 1130 is on Fridays usually. <clears throat> and I let everyone know, I'm like, Hey, in five minutes, we have class and no one else is working out during class except for the class. Cause our 1130 class is probably one of our bigger ones. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they've been great about it, you know? So they, they like go have lunch and then they'll come back after class and hit their second, third, whatever, fourth session. Um, there, I mean, I don't even, if someone told me like, Hey, you could have a job as just working out all day. I'd be like, nah, like that's, this is a, a stress reliever. I, I don't, I couldn't work out for three, four hours a day. That just doesn't sound enticing. Yeah. But. And and since you're like, you're literally in, in the, you know, in the weeds, not like you're in with them, watching yeah. them do all the workouts and you're just probably sitting there like, God, like how do they have the energy, the stamina, like the endurance, like anything just to last this long. I will tell you the will is, will is special. 
um, because he's been around since he like his first regionals was my first regionals. <laughs> yeah. So like, and he was 18. So now he's 34, like, and he's been in the game six times. Like dude is, it, he's just built different, like mentally, you know? And I think Brooks the same way. She's just the the mindset they have is, is something that is, I mean, I may have it occasionally, but they have it all the time. Mm-hmm. So it's just, I mean, you must want to really suffer like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and also proven actually opened up their own box in, in Nashville. So is that with, is that bad for your, your box at all? Or is, I mean, I mean, it, it's a good distance away, but like, are yeah. they taking clients away from, from you to, to go there? No, I mean, it's so like, people don't really want to travel outside of like a five mile radius of where they live, where I am. So like, that's, I think that's, that's close to 15 to 20 minutes away. Mm. Um, so yeah, we we didn't really lose anyone. Uh, I know that Sid goes down there and trains because you know she's on Team Proven. Um, so it's you know outside of that, I mean we we haven't really, you know I, I wish them well. Um, they utilized our gym for a long time, and you know I'm I'm glad that they have their own space now. Have you have you been there yet? No. No. Do you, do you have any plans of going? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, again, I, I don't really like to leave my, my bubble. So, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, going, I don't go down to ta- downtown Nashville. I don't, I don't go down and do any of that stuff. So like heading down there, unless like they were doing some sort of MFC, like promo thing, then I, I probably would, but uh, I just, I'll let them do their thing. Yeah. Nashville's getting crazy. So I, I live about, I think like maybe three and a half hours away because I live in like Northern part of Georgia now. And so it's, um, but like, yeah, Nashville is just, is exploding, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. It's, um, it's kind of, I mean, you said you're from North, you're living in North Georgia. I mean, it's uh, like a 10 and you maybe eight year ago, Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. And then like, and now <clears throat> since everyone was living in Atlanta, they're all like, you know, spreading out or even like moving up North. And so it's mm-hmm. just like, there's a, there's a road called 400. It's like an, in, it's not an interstate, but it's like a highway. And like all of 400 is just like growing and even further up where there's, there's like barely any lights there. It's just like, you will literally see like apartments building up like yep. homes. And it's just like, gosh, like where are all these people coming from? Yeah. Well, most of the people coming to Nashville are from California. So um that's what we've seen um you know more california plates in our neighborhood than i i've ever anticipated seeing i lived in california for about five years and i'm like i i personally would would not want to live there again um but you know that's you know apparently a lot of californians are are not wanting to live there either yeah yeah and and, i mean why would they i mean the the whole covid lockdowns and the Mm -hmm. the the lockdowns and everything were just absolutely insane. And it's, it wasn't even fair for anybody. No, I, I agree with you. It was, it's definitely, it was a different situation uh, in different parts of the country for, for everyone. Like everyone was dealing, like for everyone dealing with the same thing to have to deal with different things constantly. Like it, it didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why like even people from like New York or like even mm-hmm. Massachusetts, they were all like, moving down to Georgia or Florida or wherever, or yes. like getting out of California. And like, and like, that's where like, I mean, I, I know that's what some of the boom is coming from, but it's just like, yeah. how many more people are coming down? I mean, I don't think we could fit anymore. I think everyone has to go back. <laughs> yes, please. Please do. Please do. Yes. So uh, do you, do you miss the winters at all from being up North to, I mean, you guys still, you still get some snow. Eh, it's uh it's hit or miss we we did get one day of snow um this this past year um but it's uh it's hit or miss and uh but i do miss cold weather i i enjoy it um my wife is maybe a little less she's from santa monica originally Mm -hmm. um so yeah she doesn't really enjoy it um but i think my whole family lives up there um my mom's in connecticut my dad's in maryland so it's uh we still get to go up and, and see it sometimes yeah. Yeah. It's, I think the, the, um, the straw that broke the camel's back for my wife and I, she was seven months pregnant and I was like over my two week annual tour for the air force. And so she's like full blown pregnant, shoveling snow 
in New mm -hmm. Hampshire where we were living at the time. And she's like, that's it. Like I am done, done with yeah. this. And so her family lives like, like the town next over from where, where I live now. And like, she's like, yeah, we're moving down South. There's like no ifs, ands or buts. So once this baby's born, we're, we're leaving. Listen, I mean, my wife hasn't given me that ultimatum yet about moving anywhere, but I I'd, I'd just listen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I had no choice. So yeah. whatever, whatever makes them happy, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. It's fine. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. what I, that's what I did. I was just like, and, and I'm, I'm actually kind of glad because I, I know you being a New Englander too, we typically like to stay in our own little like bubble for me mm -hmm. for like, we like to stay in New England. It's like really don't really venture out and stuff like that. But like moving to like a whole new location was definitely an eye opening experience. And like, I don't, I don't regret it at all. Like moving to Georgia. No, I, I mean, I've moved a lot in my life, so it's like, you know, what's one more place, but I've been in Nashville now for, this is the second time I've been in Nashville and it's, you know, I'm going on, gosh, 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's home. It's that, that's where, that's where I feel more home. Like I'm from Rhode Island, but I, I'm, my home is in Nashville. Yeah. Yeah, I, my I'm I've been down here for like nine years, so it's like almost like starting to turn over to like okay, it's it's Georgia, that's it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So um, back to your gym. So I know you have like Will Morad. I think do you still have him programming your your box for your box at all? Um, no, we actually we last year um, we made the decision to just let him train for the games instead of getting us stuff and. Um, he had a lot going on, uh, family wise and stuff mm -hmm. like that with his wife. So, you know, we, we attempted to try to alleviate some of that and we went with, um, we do the proven affiliate program. Okay. How's that? How's that going? It's working out. Everyone seems to like it. So it, all that matters to me is that the members like it and you know, that's, that's number one. Yeah. So what is, what is the big picture of the gym are you looking to like expand to open another box like close by or like what's the what's the goal for i don't know like the next couple of years for for it well i think so we just opened another one um so okay. we have two um and it's it's probably like six miles away but it's just it's just far enough where they're completely separate so we have one there one uh and and they're both right like my house is right in between them so it's perfect Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like ideal, but, um, like we, I mean, we're always open to having those conversations. We'd like to have more. Um, I think that's the way, if you want to make this a business, you, you can't just have one gym. Um, you need, you need multiple. Um, so, and I know Nate is, is Nate definitely wants to make this a business mm -hmm. that, that he, he, that we get paid from. So it's, um, you know, I think that's, that's the key and that's the goal for us. And you know, someday maybe we have three, four or five. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, also you started the master's fitness collective. So like, what was the whole thing about that? I, I mean, I can't take credit, all the credit. Cause there's, there was four of us at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, there's only two of us now. Um, but there's, there was four of us. And honestly, it, we were going to originally be a media company. We were going to you know, cover the masters athletes at the games and, you know, then COVID hit and COVID changed a lot of things for a lot of people. Um, but you know, Bobby Petrus, um, uh, was like, Hey, we should just host these athletes in Indiana. And I'm like, yeah, let's, I mean, we were supposed to, we were supposed to support the games anyway. So like, let's just, let's host it. So we ended up actually taking those athletes that made it, inviting them to Indiana and, and putting on a, a end of the season for them because um, one of our, one of our buddies, Heath Moody, who has been at the games like four times, um, you know, we never got to see them compete because they didn't do any TV coverage. So that's originally why this all started. Um, and then, you know, it's just kind of grown from there. So we had like 120 people the first year. Um, I wasn't actually there, which is, is wild because I was, I was in Georgia making, um, making my, my daughter, I guess. Yeah. So, that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I wasn't in the room, but you know, whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So, it, and then the next year it was like 300 people. And then all of a sudden now we're at like 550 people. So it's, it's our, our athletes. Um, and it, it's been, it's been quite a ride. Um, 
you know, we had to make some changes here and there and, and, you know, some people fell off and, you know, but it's, it seems to be only getting better at this point. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, as long as people want to do it, we'll do it. Um, we'll put it on and, you know, and it's really just for the master's community. It's not for, like, I can tell you, I don't, I don't get any money from this. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's, it's because of the master's community that this exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what, what was it, why like Indiana for that location compared to like any place else? Yeah. So Bobby, Bobby lives in Indiana and he's like literally the mayor of Indiana. He's, <laughs> he knows everybody. <laughs> he has all the relationships and, and we, we got a pretty, um, pretty ideal deal with uh, the downtown Grand Wayne Center because he lives in Fort Wayne. So um, we ended up choosing Fort Wayne and then we moved to the Coliseum, which is a hundred thousand square feet. And we could pretty much do anything we wanted in there. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, that's where we've been since. Yeah. And I, how are you looking to make this grow to even be bigger? Because obviously with, you have the elite athletes and the, mm -hmm. these guys get more like, the majority of the like, attention compared to like the teens and masters, but mm -hmm. how are you trying to get, you know, more attention to your comp, your competition to get like more eyes, maybe more <clears throat> sponsorships or whatnot? You know, I mean, we, we're a, a CrossFit licensed event, so we're, we utilize CrossFit for that. Um, we, uh, man, I, I don't know. Like it's, it's been interesting. Uh, we work this year. We just decided that and we just struck a, a partnership with Brian friend, um, so we're going to be working with him leading up to the competition. Um, we have, we brought on a social media person. I mean, it's, there's a lot of um, positive movement going on right now. And, and we're hoping that that leads to something that's, you know, even more efficiently run and, and well done uh, than last year was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, obviously like having more coverage or like more eyes, on there is a huge help but i know i know one of the yeah. big sponsors that you have is hero barbell which i'm sponsored by them too so you've been pretty much with them since like was it day one pretty much you know they the we had three a three-year contract with them um but my i'll tell you both my gyms we we struck a deal with them we're hero barbell gyms we have no more rogue barbells it's only hero barbells in our gym um it's and they're beautiful, man. You know, Frank. Oh my gosh! And yeah, Tony. They do such a great job. Um, it's really what they're doing is something special. We're actually going to be changing out all our um, comp plates as well. To 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 uh, to hero too. I, have you have yeah. you tried those comp plates yet? They're pretty nice. Oh, really? Okay. They did a really good job. Yeah. The first the first thing that got me with the barbell. Um, so. It was the spin like i wasn't mm -hmm. i wasn't ready for it dude the, the it, to be a bar that costs under 300 dollars and to have that much spin and whip like it's i don't even know how they're doing it but you know keep doing it because they're doing a wonderful job yeah yeah and i mean are you planning to have them on for a little bit longer at all or what's the what's the deal <clears throat> with that for hero well, i use I used to run our sponsorships. Now I, I kind of oversee the whole competition now. Um, so we have our sponsorship team working on them. Hopefully, you know, we continue that relationship. Um, personally, I plan on continuing my relationship with them. Well, no matter what is decided, um, cause they're just, they're stand up people and, and they make a great product. Yeah, definitely. So, um, how, obviously you said you like, what sponsors are you, are you guys mainly may, hopefully looking for for mm -hmm. your competition like you know i know obviously you, i've seen like you you may have like different tiers and whatnot so mm -hmm. what what are ones that you kind of like will align with your with your competition you know i think last year i i can go over what we did last year which is uh, arctic was just fantastic for us um you know they did all our cups for all our our athlete bags um and they did our, our swag bags for the podium. Um, Yeti always is a part of, of what we do. Um, they usually give us a, a certain allotment of money for, for sponsored gear. Um, Tier came through last year, um, you know, and they did all our apparel, which I wow. mean, 
they're wonderful. Um, working with Corey Berger is, was, was pretty, pretty cool. Um, man, we have, we have, we do have a new title sponsor this year, which is, is, is big news. Um, but I can't tell you who that is yet. Oh, come so, on. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to, we're going we're gonna to announce that very, very soon, but it's with what they're, um, how they're, how they're supporting us. We're, we're going to allow them to go ahead and, and announce that. And then we'll, we'll share it out from there. Okay. And so for the masters athletes that are trying to get in there, are you going to use the open of like the top, like 40 or whatever to, to do it or just like open, like open registration? We have a qualifier in June, um, June 1st through the 9th is our, our qualifier. And then <clears throat> for teams, uh, we teams in 60 plus it's just sign up and go. Um, okay. And we may or may not have a new division coming, um, this year. Uh, so keep your eyes out on that. Uh, it should be something that's a little exciting. Um, but you know, we'll see. Was it the 80 plus? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> listen, I, I get, I get emails all the time about like, they're like, Oh, is it 60 to 64 and 65 plus? And I'm like, yes. They're like, well, why isn't there a 70? And I'm like, cause you're 65 plus. Yeah. They, like you don't need anything else. <laughs> But no, but seriously, like here's the, 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 if, if there was demand for it, if there was like, I told, and I told this lady very straight up, I'm like, if you can get me five men and five women, I'll make you a division. That's fine. I can That's do reasonable. That. Yeah. But if, if like, you're going to, you're going to be the only person that signs up, like I, I can't do that. And that, cause that throws off our schedule immensely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just one of those things where if the demand's there, we'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah. And, and that's almost like the adaptive athletes too, because you have some division that, that may have like 10 people max maybe. Mm -hmm. And it's like not worth it for them to, to have it. So they'll just mix it in with like other people and other groups. The wild. And, you know, I've been, I've been lucky enough to work with two adaptive athletes, um, one upper and one lower and like the man, they get the short end. Like you think masters get those short end, like adaptive athletes, so I, the, the two, Amy Bream is one of the, the athletes and she has one leg and she's competing against people at the games that have two legs, like two mostly functioning legs. Like that's such a disadvantage. And then yeah. same thing, same thing with uh, Jenny Tidwell. Um, she made the games last year. She's, you know, like that was her goal. And then, you know, she has to go against people that have two hands, like, now wheel wad does it right now they have separate divisions for everything and i i think that is i'm very very happy for them that that's how they went um because i just don't think it's fair to have someone with two hands going against someone that has one hand <laughs> yeah exactly you know? yeah yeah <clears throat> so do you guys do you guys collaborate with like each other to say like hey i mean obviously the adaptive division and the masters are completely different from what mm -hmm. they are but like for a competition wise do you, have you guys like connected with each other saying, Hey, you know, we thought this was a good idea of, of doing it this way. You know, how did you um, do it or anything like that? Not, I mean, there, there hasn't been a lot of conversation. There hasn't been any conversation that I know of. Um, we've talked to the, the pit teen ranch a couple of times and, and we've, we, I've worked with them and, and discussed sponsorships and stuff like that with them. Um, but outside of that, you know, I, you know, there is, Apparently people think that there, there is something secret about putting on a competition. Um, and a lot of people just don't talk about it. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. It's like, it's what I tell people about nutrition. I'm like, this is not rocket science. You know yourself better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Like, so like start, start listening to yourself. Like, and, and it's, it's not rocket science. And, and I don't know, I think people just want to keep their cards close to their vest. Yeah. Yeah. And also with uh with prize money too. So I are you looking to like move the prize money up a little bit more or like how how does it, obviously with, with you need more sponsors to get the prize money bigger. So so the confusing part to me and it's always been this way is that like 80% of the spending in CrossFit comes from Masters athletes. Exactly. So you have a very captive audience who will buy your products. Like we had um, a company called Chili Goat, which is Ma Ma uh, Master Spas. And they sell cold plunges. 
And now these aren't just a, this isn't a tank with some water in it. These things are like rocket ships mm -hmm. um, and they're like 10 grand. And we, they sold like, I think over five at our competition. Jeez. Like, so like the money's there, like these, these companies, they should, they should be like chomping at the bit to get a part of, of masters athletes, but no one seems to want to pony up. They all want, they all want the young pretty kids. Yeah. Cause they think the pretty kids will actually sell more stuff. And it, to be honest, it's like, it's a, that's not, that's not how it's working. It, it really doesn't. Um, you know, I mean, you look at like, like we already talked about Ron, Ron works with master spots. Like, like that's, that's the, the people you want to go after. That's the people you want to give like the comp comp to uh, spot to because they're going to sell it better than anyone else, you know? So, I, I mean, it's, it's confusing to me. It's always been confusing to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I, I don't get it. Cause like, for example, you'll have some influencer that has like a million plus followers mm -hmm. and they're not making as much, they're not making as much money as a person that has maybe like 15 to 20,000 or even 10,000 because the 10,000, they get more views or like get the people, like they feel like they're connected. So I don't understand like why a master's competition is not connecting with, you know, everyone else or, or bringing them in to connect. I mean, I don't know. Do we have to go after AARP or like, do we have to go after like Gillette? I mean, what do we, get to, what do we have to do is the question, you know? And I think that if these companies really want a, a piece of the CrossFit space, they should go after masters. Mm -hmm. you, you know what, you know, it was an interesting topic. I was watching the uh, Peter white coffee pods and wads that the beyond the whiteboard thing. Mm -hmm. And so they said, how can CrossFit like, would be a good sponsor for a uh, for sponsor for CrossFit. I think um, Seth from Jump Ship Training. He said that Visa should do something with with CrossFit, and I'm like, that is an absolute genius idea. And then like use money towards like you know them being fit and getting exercise or whatnot. I I it was it's not verbatim, but it's like something to do with like movement and like getting data to visa yeah. and then they pay and i'm like that that's a genius idea like why don't we get visa i mean that amex amex is i i feel like amex is like the old people's card yep so like you know companies like that i mean they they should they should be a part of this um you know and it's just getting them on the phone is the hardest part uh, it's like you know trying to pull teeth mm -hmm. yeah it's like constantly like for me as a i was a recruiter back in the day so it's like you're always on the phone like every single day like calling the yeah. same person it's just like yeah it's crazy but i was thinking you could also get advil or asper cream maybe yeah, on the seriously. on the team or something like that just any anything yeah what what's the the uh the denture or gel yeah, or like uh something <laughs> like that yeah <laughs> you know anything for old people uh um, yeah blue emu um, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. But, um, we're, we're getting close to the end, so I don't want to take too much time off, off you. But, uh, so I have some, um, rapid fire questions. They're not really rapid fire. So you can take as long as long as you want. So, um, what are your goals personally and like business wise for the end of the year? Personally, um, man, I just, I just really want to be a good dad and a good husband. I mean, I think, you know, I used to be able to like, oh man, I want to go to the games. I want to do this. I want to do that. Now I'm just like, I just want to be a good, a good person. You know, I think that's my number one. Um, and it's, it's a learning process because sometimes my, my sarcasm gets the best of me and you know, you're from Massachusetts. You yeah. It's, it. a, it's, it's, it's a New England thing. Yeah. You know, we're just, we're a little gruff around, around the edges. Um, Business wise, you know, I mean, I'd like to continue. I've, I've had my my nutrition company for 16 years um, and uh, I'd like to continue to grow the gym. I'd love to get one more gym before the end of the year um, and then continue to to grow uh, the the wellness company that uh, I'm working for. Mm -hmm. So would you if you open another gym, would you do it out of state or would you kind of keep it in the same area? <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I think it would, I would want it outside of the 10 minute, 10 mile range. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and I think Nate and I have discussed that and, you know, if the right opportunity comes up, we have our eye on a few different locations. Um, you know, 
if it, if it happens, it happens and we'll be excited to, to continue to grow. Okay. All right. So next question. Um, what is your favorite book to read? Oh man. Um, I've, I've committed to reading two books a month this, this year. Um, the most recent one I read was breathe by uh, James Nestor. Um, I, I mean, science, I like the science. I I'm, a, I'm kind of an analytics nerd. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so learning about breathing techniques and things like that and, and where these techniques came from was, was pretty cool. Uh, I'm also like, I do, I, I will literally listen or read to anything that's nutrition based. So, um, I just, the other book I read this month was, um, your brain on food. Okay. Uh, and it was, it was interesting. Um, you know, I mean, you know, it, interesting i would say yeah yeah so have, have you been watching some of those like netflix documentaries like you are what you eat or like those other no. other okay no. so so there's there's one that my wife and i watched it was um uh, I, th- I think it was called you are what you eat so they had two they had like i think it was like nine to 15 set of twins yeah. one one went like a regular diet with like meat and vegetables and all that stuff and the other person went vegan mm. and so they were like it, it was interesting because like they said like oh th- this person's like you know blood levels were good the other person was obviously because some of those documentaries are completely biased towards like to, towards one thing and so the one thing that really got me that kind of freaked me out was the vegans they lost like all muscle mass mm-hmm. they, like not all of it but i'm just saying they lost like a little bit compared to the other person that's eating meat like still had it so yeah it was it was interesting yeah, I mean, you look at things like uh, documentaries like that and Game Changers and uh, all those mm-hmm. things, and you're just like, <clears throat> you know, first of all, who's backing it? You know, you, so you look at Game Changers and you have Steven Spielberg and Bill Gates as the big backers for that one. Well, those two guys are, they own fake meat plants. Like, they own, like, the largest population of them, you know, so it's like, all right, who's funding this? Um, and I'm not like a huge conspiracy theorist guy or anything like that, but when it comes to people who want to make money and don't care where they get it from, like I, I just I try to follow follow common sense. Yeah, yeah, and especially with the game changers, um, that strong man that was carrying that yoke for like X amount of like distance. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's big and he's plant based, but like how how much gear is this guy on? Or like, exactly. like what, what else is this guy on other than like eating vegan or eating, eating a plant-based diet? You know, and, and listen, I'll tell you, like, if it still takes a lot of work, whether you have, you're enhanced or not, you know, for, for a guy like that to be that big and that strong, it takes a lot of work and dedication, but like, is it easier? Yeah, absolutely. Like you can pretty much, as long as you stay within a calorie sorry, calorie level, you know, anabolic steroids are going to be the thing that actually like keeps that muscle mass on and keeps you big while, you know, you're trying to like lean out or do any of that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all a little biased. Um, the food industry has kind of done this for a very long time. Yep. Um, so it's, it's just one of those things where the, the FDA has kind of become a little bit of a joke. Um, there's just, it's like the wild west. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, they even have like some some products here that are actually banned in Europe. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, a, and it's a like a lot of our processed food is is other parts of the of the world aren't allowed. It's, it should say something. Yeah, exactly, and especially with the Kellogg CEO saying you should eat cereal for breakfast for dinner too, help you save money. <laughs> and did you ever see that uh, that that food pyramid that they had? That's like cereal is better than chicken. Yes. Yeah. Like, or like, just, yeah, it's like, how really? That, how's that possible? Like it's, it's not scientifically possible. No, no, it's definitely pushing money someplace to some yeah. other place. So yeah. Exactly. All right. We went off on a little tangent, but it was a good one though. So, right. <laughs> so let's just, so this one's going to be a little bit deep. So let's just say it's your last day on earth. Um, how do you want people to know you as? Wow. Um, You kind of, I don't know. You, you kind of got me there. Um, 
I don't know. I've never, I've never really like, I just, I, I really, I think it's more like, I want my family to know that they mattered the most. You know, I, I don't, I don't really care what people think about me. Um, except for them. You know, I think that that's the most important thing to me. And I, I think that's changed over a period of time. Um, you know, when you think about legacy, when you don't have kids, you're like, how are people going to remember me? And and then you have kids and you're like, those people need to remember me. And that's really what's important. So yeah, you know, I, yeah. um, that's where I am with it. I, I think I just want my, my family to know that they were the most important thing in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's a great answer. That's, that's, that's the mindset that I'm at right now. So yeah. it's like, I just want to make sure like, especially doing this podcast, like I want to make sure that my kids hear me talk to other people or just they can hear my voice after like I'm long gone or whatever, or even my exactly. grandkids too. So, yeah, I mean, and, and that's the, that's the legacy that you're leaving. You know, you, you, you give everyone the opportunity, your family, the opportunity to, you know, enjoy you outside of being dad, you know, I mean, and they get to watch this and listen to this. I, I, I mean, I think that's, that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My son's like really getting into like podcasting too. So we have his like own little podcast called curiosity, the kid. And so like his, his whole, he's all about NFL. He's all about football now, but we talk about like NFL and then he has like a question at the end of the podcast, which is like maybe 20 minutes max, like, mm -hmm. cause it's not that much. So, um, and he'll have like a question, like how many teeth do sharks have? Or like, why don't birds get electrocuted on like, you know, power lines or whatever like that. And just yeah. like, just like silly questions like that. Or like who was, who's the most accurate ki kicker in the NFL right now? Just like stuff like that, just to get, get the questions going and like ha having him think about stuff. It was just, so that's, he's, he's all about the podcast. Yeah. And he wants to hear his podcast like over and over and over again too. <laughs> it's just like, can we watch this? I'm like, can we listen to this? I'm like, I'm like, buddy, we, we've already heard this 10 times already. Like, do we need to like we just recorded it? Come on. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, and another thing is like, he likes doing it, but I, I don't force him to do not. I don't force him to do it. I'm like, Hey, you know, we can do the podcast anytime you want. I'll set it up. Like I I'll, I'll, you know, put it out there in the world for everyone to listen to or watch to watch whatever. But like, it's going to be on your own terms. If you want to do a podcast today, we can, if not like whatever, we'll do, we'll do it. We'll do it another time. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think that's a, a, that's what I strive to do. Um, when it, then obviously my kids are young right now, so they're not doing sports, but like, I know my father pushed me towards certain sports. I, I just, I don't know, like, and I I'm, I'm thankful for the way I was raised, but like, I don't know if that's the direction that I'm going to do it with my kids. I want them to want to do something. I don't want them to do it because I tell them they have to. Yeah. Cause you don't want them to be burnt out too. Exactly. So that's another thing. So, uh, so next question. So what is in your gym bag? Oh gosh. Um, everything. <laughs> I have one of those Haven bags. Oh gosh. Okay. All right. So if anybody, yeah. If anybody doesn't know what a Haven bag is, just, just Google it. I'm telling you, yep. the thing's huge. It's, it's way bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, but it, I mean, I have two belts in there. I have, all my mobility stuff because I'm old. I have every knee sleeve and, and elbow sleeve I, I could find uh, and a pair of running shoes. Um, yeah, that's and, and my jump rope, two jump ropes, two of everything because I'll forget yeah. something somewhere. Of course. Have you worked on those crossovers? Uh, I've done. I the guy who does my programming, his name's Joe Blumenauer. He um, he programs them all the time. And so I do them all the time. Yeah. So assuming we're going to see them. I, that's what I was going to ask. Do you think it's going to be in the open this year? I mean, I, I think it's, it's been what, two years that they've, they've put it in either the games or semis. So I think it's about time that they're, they, they brought it into the open, mm -hmm. but they did do the wall walks. They've never done that at the games. That's true. And they put that in. So, but they, they also made the, the, the most difficult wall walk <laughs> with the wall facing handstand pushups. True. True. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, the, that wall walk double under workout ruined me. That was that was a bad day for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all all shoulder. That's yeah, it. Just, Not, was nothing mess. else. Um, no. So, last question: Where can people reach out to you for your like nutrition program, <laughs> like going to your gym, like pretty much like any anything that we talked about in the podcast? 
Yeah, I mean, everything can be connected through Instagram. Uh, my handle is uh, the number 27 and then the words health and wellness. So 27 health and wellness. Um, uh, people are like, all right, what, what is that 24 seven? No, I'm, no, it's 27. Um, it, that was my college football number. So that's kind of what I went with. Okay. Uh, so two, seven health and wellness. Okay. So that's, I was, I was going to ask you like, what was the, what was the reason why the number on the, on your arm for the, on the tat with the tattoo? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, that was my college number. And then, so I didn't get the tattoo until, um, I had been, I had owned my company for, for about 10 years. So, um, it was, it's, it's something that is a part of me and, and I'm, I'm very, very lucky to get to do what I do. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming on the show. I really like this was, this was awesome to get to know you a little bit more. And, you know, I, I would love to have you back on to talk about yeah. like more old fogey stuff, you know, whatever. So, and uh, well, we're both masters. I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah, definitely.